Hello and welcome back to another Aspiring Medics video. For those of you that are new here, my name is Anya and I'm currently a fourth year medical student at the University of Oxford. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking all things UCAT. I can remember when I first was at school and heard the name UCAT, I was really quite nervous. It was an exam format that I was not used to. The styles of questions that were asked were not what were typical of the GCSC and A-level biology and chemistry and all of those kind of questions that I was used to. And so I remember feeling really nervous, but there is no need to be nervous or scared about the UCAT because in today's video, we're gonna go through exactly what the UCAT consists of. And I'm gonna give you my five top tips on how to prepare for the UCAT so that you can score in the top deciles and get that golden ticket through to interview. So what is the UCAT test? The UCAT is the aptitude test that all students from the UK who are wanting to apply to medical school will now have to take. It's an examination that can be taken between July and September and will last two hours of which there are five individually timed sections. In the first section, it is all about verbal reasoning. So you will be presented with 11 passages for which there will be four questions for each passage and you have to determine what conclusions can be drawn from that passage. The second subject is decision making. Similarly here, it is about being able to draw conclusions from the passages that are presented to you. But instead of it being all text, this can be from graphs, from Venn diagrams, and you will have to look at that information and you could answer a variety of subjects from logical puzzles, from syllogisms, from probabilities, statistical reasonings based on the information that is presented to you. Third up is quantitative reasoning. And as it says on the tin, it is going to assess your numerical skills and how to solve problems. But here it's not about solving complex equations. It tends to be quite simple maths where it's about how accurate and how quick you are at extracting the relevant data from the data that is presented to you in order to answer the question. Now the fourth section is abstract reasoning. Here you will have to identify patterns based on abstract shapes and colours and there will be distractors and it's about can you spot that pattern and critically evaluate and generate hypotheses and then query that judgment as you go along when looking at the patterns. Now the final section is the situational judgment and this is quite different from the previous four subjects. Here you will be presented with real life situations and you are asked what would you do in that situation. So it's all about justice, integrity and decision making but for the real life scenarios that could happen in the hospital. Now let's go on to my five top tips of how to conquer the UCAT. So tip one, like I said earlier in the video, the UCAT can be quite an intimidating test to start off with. So I think taking that into consideration, the best thing to do is to start by doing, instead of just doing a mock examination straight off the back, to start with individual subsections and to do this untimed and really get into the flow and recognize what type of questions are asked, what methods you are going to use to approach each of the individual subsections and work from there to slowly build yourself up. There's no point in going into it so quickly. It's about starting to spot the patterns. And that leads nicely onto point two, which is to recognize your strengths and weaknesses. For me, I love maths and the quantitative reasoning section was quite easy for me in comparison to the verbal reasoning because I was not used to reading such large passages of text. I did chemistry, biology and maths. So reading these kind of um, passages when they're not necessarily always on scientific information. So I think that was something I recognized myself that I had to work on. So a good idea is to start and look at where your strengths and weaknesses are. It's very easy for me, you know, for a bit of confidence to just only stick to quantitative reasoning. But obviously this um, examination is formed of five sections. 
So really trying to tailor your revision to where your weaknesses lie is really good because it's gonna build up your confidence so that when you go into the exam, all of those sections you're gonna feel comfortable with. And kind of leading on to tip number three, which is recognize the patterns and start to make a list. I know quite often people are given the advice when it comes to abstract reasoning to maybe have a mnemonic of how to remember certain things to look for. Is it shape? Is it size? Is it number? Is it angles? And all of those kind of things. So that's really good for abstract reasoning in a moment of panic when you can't see that pattern to really have something that you can fall back on to go individually through in a formulaic way. But I don't necessarily think it is just with abstract reasoning that that is helpful. I think also the kinds of words and phrases that are used in decision making or in verbal reasoning, spotting those patterns about repeated questions that come up, repeated strategies that you can use and have those in kind of banks so that you know the techniques that you are gonna use to approach each individual section. And then my fourth but biggest tip is that all questions are marked equally, but that does not mean that all questions are made equally. The biggest thing about the UCAT is that it is a hugely time pressured exam. And I think a really good thing and strategy to realize is that for some of them, you're, it's only gonna take one to two steps to get to the answer. But in another question, it could take you four or five steps to get to the answer. And obviously they take up significantly more time than some of the shorter ones. So I think recognizing that, that you are gonna get the same amount of points depending on that if you answered the easy question or the harder question, that sometimes if a question is taking you quite a long period of time you just to notice that don't get bogged down on it and to just move on to the next question because it's just going to eat up into the time that you don't have and maybe the easier questions at the end are the ones that you're going to have missed out on because you've missed out on the timings so recognizing if a question is hard to flag it, make an educated guess and move on. And then if you have time at the end, you can come back to it. And then tip number five is don't neglect the situational judgment test. I think a lot of the time we can focus on the first four sections because they're you know, the ones that are a little bit more time pressured and so we spend a lot of revision time on that. But a situational judgment test is still really important. The skills and the thought processes that you need are so key to being a doctor and understanding the situational judgment decision making is not just going to help you in your UCAT but will potentially help you in your interviews because they do lots of situational judgment style questions at interview. So my top tip would be to look at the GMC website and their guidance. Those are a lot of the things that are gonna help guide um, your choices when it comes to situational judgment. So to recap, my top five tips would be to start slowly with your approach and build up so you can build up your confidence. To recognize your strengths and weaknesses and to tailor your revision appropriately because of that. Make lists and banks of repeating questions or ideas and your technique to those so that you can spot the patterns and you can get much quicker. That all questions are marked equally, so take that into consideration when you're focusing on your timing. And five, to really utilize the GMC website and the resources when it comes to situational judgment, because situational judgment is still very important and is scored and taken into consideration for interview. It's my short UCAT overview video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and hit like and subscribe and check out all of the rest of our Aspiring Medics YouTube videos.